I would like to show my game against Radoslav Wojtaszek. Uh, I was black, so I was not very ambitious uh, in, because he is playing very well uh, nowadays, uh, unlike me. Uh, okay, I was a bit surprised uh, by this line. I wanted to play Greenfield anyway, anyway, but uh, I haven't expected a deck to play uh, this line with Queen A4. It was a big surprise for me. I think Bishop D7 leads to normal positions, which I wanted to avoid. Uh, avoid. Uh, so C6 was possible, but I don't know it at all. So I decided to play something what I know, Knight C6. Frankly speaking, I believe that White is slightly better after Bishop F4 here, because White has a simple plan to play E3, maybe Rook D1, H3, Bishop E2, and then uh, the bad position of black's knight can tell black cannot advance c7 c5 under normal circumstances uh, so this is why i believe bishop f4 will be the strongest move here but in the game there happened bishop g5 which is also good and maybe it is also better for white i, I don't know really In the game I castled, I don't know what's the theory, whether black should play queen a5 immediately or not. After I castle I cannot play queen a5 anymore because this pawn is hanging. hanging. So queen b5 was a surprise for me, but I haven't known the position very well anyway, so it doesn't matter. I played bishop e6, actually I haven't calculated the consequences of the queen takes b7 accurately, but I my idea was that I could take it and play, yeah, I could play rook e8 and then bishop g4 at some moment and I hoped that I should have sufficient counterplay. This looks too risky because uh, I can uh, play rook fc8 first and then somehow attack this square, this point. And uh, after queen a6, I can play bishop g4, I then immediately or after the preliminary preparatory move for rook, d, rook b6. So I believe that that should be okay, but uh, I'm not sure. It was no preparation after all. Uh, I played bishop e2, after which I decided to take uh, the queen. I saw nothing better because white was threatening to play c4 at some moment or to castle. Uh, and. Uh, I wanted to get use of the fact that Black White has lost one tempo with his bishop. In fact, it was not a loss of tempo because uh, the exchange of queens is good for White. Okay, but Black is holding somehow. Maybe White is slightly better, but it does not matter so much. Actually, I want to uh, play a6 then and uh, to force the bishop uh, to leave one of these diagonals. Uh, so there happened knight d2, maybe white could have played better somewhere around here, but I'm not so much interested in this moment, of, in this part of the game. So please forgive me for this. Knight a5, uh, king e2, c5. I also considered b5, but the break a4 might be unpleasant at some moments, so c5. Is probably fine. Uh, rook uh, fc. No, that's not the move. It was actually played. I believe a4 was played in order to prevent b5. And now I decided to advance e7 e5. I played this, uh, getting use of the fact that, that after e4 I can play bishop c6, and now after bishop e3. Rook d8 would not have been good because of d5 when uh, white has a strong threat of uh, bishop b6 and after bishop takes d5 white should be better thanks to his bishop pair here but uh, in fact I believe that I can play e6 instead and this pawn is a bit weak and uh, I can play I can even play f5 sometimes, for example, if we had defense it in this way, rook a d8, perhaps. I hope d5 does not work. It should not. 
So why does the defense say in this way I have f5 and the black should keep the equality somehow? Or after rook b4 I have uh, at least this move, bishop f8, and I again believe that the position is around equal. So this was my intention. And in the game there happened something else, namely f3. I I expected something like bishop uh, e4, uh, after which I probably would have taken it and played uh, h6. The idea of this move will become clear later, because if black plays e5, then there might be some knight jumps, and after h6, white can already play bishop f6 with some edge. So h6. And now if white uh, white's bishop goes here, then black can probably try to catch it somehow, catch him. Maybe f5, maybe g5, I'm not sure, actually. I calculated some line, but now it does not seem so convincing to me uh, anymore. But uh, it should probably be fine. And if white goes there, then I play e5 with complete equality. I take with my bishop. <coughs> uh, so this was my intention, but uh, Radek played uh, f3 instead, e5. At this moment, I and this moment, I felt tired, so I hoped that he would play well now and keep the equality somehow, so that I could uh, relax and make a quick draw. <laughs> but this is not what has happened. So he played rook c1, and uh, I saw that if I play rook a c8, then uh, he, he can play various moves, but I dislike this idea, actually. The rook c5, b6, and uh, rook c1 again. Because it seemed to me that if we exchange the pawns, my pawn might become rather a weakness than a strength. I'm not sure about it, actually. I can take it and uh, play b5 at some moment after the exchange of rooks. But, uh, Okay, I'm not sure really, but uh, I think my decision was correct. <coughs> uh, I decided to attack the pawn immediately with uh, bishop c6. I will not analyze the moves uh, which happened now in depth, because there is not enough time for it. Knight c4, knight b3, rook b1. I cannot take the pawn because of knight b6, but I can attack it once more, and it's uh, very difficult defend this pawn, actually. Knight b6, rook b8. This does not bring black anything, because white can exchange on a4, eliminating the knight fork on c3, and take on b7, and white is fine. This pawn is not so dangerous yet, and white might have some counterplay here. I believe the position to be equal which might be wrong, but it doesn't scare me so much, actually. So, I played bishop c... Uh, he played bishop c2. I uh, know, I played rook b8, he played bishop c2, and now I played uh, bishop c7 in order to attack the pawn once more. Uh, a5 there happened, and uh, now I did not see any uh, especially convincing way how to take the pawn. Because, because if I play knight d7, then I disliked something like bishop e4 followed by bishop f4, and white recaptures this pawn. Actually, I can get my rook, uh, get with my rook to the second rank, but I think it does not bring anything serious because my other pieces are not playing yet. So I believe that white is fine here. So. I chose a different continuation instead, and uh, I decided to activate my rook, uh, playing a rook c8. Uh, in fact, uh, rook e6 deserved a serious attention. I, I'm not sure whether I'm winning a pawn or not here. Uh, bishop f4 does not save the pawn on account of uh, knight d7 at this line. but. Uh, I, 
I'm not sure really. Moret can, for example, play h4, h5 in order to get some counterplay, or he can try to pin my pieces somehow. I don't know what's the best here. But it seemed to me that white should have some compensation. Actually, rook e6 might have been stronger than my move, but it looks logical to activate one more piece and to create such a threat. But uh, I all looked that after bishop f4, that e6 is not so strong, in fact. I considered knight e6, but after bishop e4, white should be able to defend the position, because if he plays something like this, then he is not forced to take on c6, he can even play this. Because if we exchange all the material like this, then the best thing I can hope for is a rook and the game with uh, three pawns against two, which is known to be drawn rather easily. A5. So this makes no sense. And uh, black should try to do his best in order to avoid this scenario, in this scenario. Uh, so, actually, I wanted to take the pawn somehow, but I did not see any convenient way, because white wants to defend it, playing bishop c7. The bishop is here. Uh, and uh, I also considered uh, rook ed8 at this moment with rook d1, bishop d3 in mind. My idea is uh, to exchange all the material except of one pair of rooks then, and then to push this pawn forward. For example, if white takes it, king g3, otherwise there would be some checks. Knight takes f4. Now we exchange material, and it seemed to me that I could have reasonable winning chances because I play king f8 first. This king is cut off. <laughs> uh, I have a rook c6, a rook d6 in the event of rook c1, and uh, otherwise I can advance my king and then my pawn. And uh, positions like this should be very difficult for. Why? Because the pawn and the games are usually lost at this pawn structure. I, I'm not sure about it, actually, but it looked pr promising enough to me. But uh, unfortunately, I disliked uh, the reply rook ad1 at this moment. It is very important to go there with the rook from a1 and not from uh, the uh, not from h1 or where it was the other rook, I don't remember it. So the point is that now uh, white can play bishop c7. Uh, and uh, he manages to defend this pawn. Uh, I'm afraid the rook was on b1, so if we had such a position, I, uh, if I would have taken here if we had had such a position, sorry for my English. And the king is on g8, I don't remember the position exactly. That's one of my multiple uh, forthcomings, uh, shortcomings. I'm sorry for my English. That's another one. So, uh, okay. Well, maybe I will be able to re recall the position one day. Perhaps not now. Okay, bishop d3 happened. I decided to exchange the rooks and and exchange the like pieces <coughs> and to keep the rooks in order to try whether there are any winning chances at all. <coughs> 